There is a Republican congressional candidate from the third district in Illinois, and he is going unchallenged, meaning that there is no one who will run against him in the Republican primary in that district in that state. His name is Arthur Jones, and the reason why he's making headlines is because he is a disgusting human being. He openly denies that the Holocaust happened. In fact, his campaign website features a page called Holocaust that includes includes a type note calling the murder of 6 million Jews by Nazis, quote, the biggest blackest lie in history and falsely claiming there is no proof of the Holocaust beyond a few professional concentration camp survivors. Okay, so um, again, no Republican is challenging him. So he is set to win the Republican ticket. and. Um, this has caused quite a bit of an issue for the Republican Party. There have been members of the Republican Party who have come out and, you know, basically said that they don't agree with him, they don't like him, they don't want anything to do with him. But what stood out to me the most is how much this type of rhetoric has become normalized. In fact, he granted an interview to a local reporter in Chicago, and I want to hear I want you to hear what he had to say about the issue of the Holocaust. Take a look. Economic policies of Hitler brought that nation up from the very bottom. In 12 years of his rule, they went from the age of the biplane to the age of the rocket. I designed a, a huge ad that Full page ad that appeared in Milwaukee Journal newspaper. Full page with a huge swastika right in the center of the thing. And the Jews had no idea, you know, that was coming. Okay, and imagine you're some rabbi, he opened up the paper one morning and all of a sudden, bingo, here's that swastika looking you in the face. Who may join the America First Committee? Membership in this organization is open to any white American citizen of European non Jewish descent. To me, the Holocaust is what I said it is. It's an international extortion racket. The green, red, and black flag of the black militants, that's their goal. They wanna take over the Southland and drive the white people out and take it over and create a black nation right there. So uh, his campaign includes the slogan, it's time to put America first. Gee, I wonder where he got that from. Uh, also, he ran for office back in 2016 and he expressed his support for Trump's candidacy back then. But his only concern was that Trump's daughter Ivanka is married to a Jew, that was his quote. But now he says that he actually regrets voting for Trump because the president has, quote, surrounded himself with hordes of Jews. This hmm. guy is despicable. Yeah. Um. Like there, there's, there's someone out there who is actually significantly worse than Trump. Like, it's amazing. Yeah. So the America First um, slogan that Trump also has, actually originally was used by the America First Committee. And who were they? Uh, they it was an anti-Semitic, non-interventionist group from World War II who thought we should not uh, fight the Nazis. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why the Anti-Defamation League asked Trump not to use the slogan America First because of its dark history here in America. And Trump was like, yeah, whatever, man. No, I'm gonna use it, don't care. Yeah, I, I think that's relevant, right? Because it's it's one, I mean, look, it's one thing if you play devil's advocate and you say, okay, well, maybe Trump just didn't know. America first by itself as a phrase isn't you know, a questionable phrase. But then once you look into the history and you know that where it comes from, you would think he'd stop using it if he's not, you know, the person that we know he is. And, and he continued using it, doesn't care. And America first does not have any other connotation. There, there isn't like, oh, but America First was also known for this. Right. No, it was only known in that context. So, uh, you know, look, one party has folks like Arthur Jones, and the other party doesn't. That doesn't make the other party wonderful and angelic. And both parties have corruption, and we should fight against uh, the corruption in both parties. But if you're a white supremacist, it is very clear which party you're gonna go to. Mm -hmm. There was another blogger who was denying the Holocaust who was brought to the State of the Union by Matt Gates, the Republican congressman, and, and openly bragging about it. So these are dark times, and in Charlottesville, they not only ran over Heather Heyer and, and all the other people who were injured after they were doing their white supremacist rally, but in a story you might not have heard, um, some of the Nazis had surrounded a Jewish temple in Charlottesville. 
and the, and the people were trapped inside. They were calling the police, but the police were busy and they were really scared. They were trying to figure out a way to get the Torah and other uh, things out of the temple without the Nazis catching them. And the Nazis were uh, shouting, this is in America, this is in Charlottesville, Virginia in the year 2017. And they were uh, chanting blood and soil, blood and soil outside uh, their temple. These are very scary times. So now it doesn't mean that every Republican is Arthur Jones. But when Arthur Jones thinks, which party am I going to go to, that's a no brainer. Right. And again, you know, to their credit, there are um, Republicans who are coming out and, and speaking against uh, Arthur Jones and what he's saying. Um, but it's, it is fascinating that they can't find another Republican to take part in the primary. Um, it is what it is, and and I do want to be clear: it's highly unlikely that Arthur Jones is going to win. Um, it's more likely that the representative uh, that's uh, the current incumbent, who's a Democrat, is going to win. His name is Dan Lipinski. Uh, by the way, uh, Dan Lipinski might not even survive a primary by Mary Newman, who's given him a run for his money, and she should. Uh, that leads me to my final point and my frustration with the Democratic Party, which is totally different scale and context, but. Um, Dan Lipinski, they say, oh, don't worry about Arthur Jones. He can't possibly win. That's such a heavily Democratic district. Then why is Dan Lipinski, one of the most conservative Democrats in the country, representing a, a district that, according to all the experts, Democrats could not possibly lose? So then why don't we have a really progressive person representing that district instead of a guy who is deeply conservative? They, would the Republicans allow that anywhere? Where you have a deeply red district, they're like, but let's have a liberal Republican there instead. Never, <laughs> right? So why do they, Democratic Party, uh, you know, not only tolerate Dan Lipinski but encourage him time and time again? Because they don't care about being progressive. All they care about is the money. Is can Dan Lipinski raise a lot of money from his corporate friends? Yes. Then they're like. Good enough, he calls himself a Democrat. What do we care how he votes? Because the Democratic Party doesn't care about policy. So the Republicans, they think some loathsome things, but they, but a lot of them care about policy. They care about pushing the country more right wing. Yeah. Um, their policy is horrible and the Democrats refusal to fight for their policy beliefs is also horrible. Again, different scale and context, Right. but and that's the problem with the parties. And, and Look, to be fair, Republicans don't care about being identified as corporatists, right? So they'll openly- They revel in it. They, exactly, so they will openly propose pro-corporate policies and they can push for it because their voters know what they really represent. Whereas Democrats have the same issue of corporate corruption, um, but they pretend like they don't. And then they try to distract with social issues. It's constantly social issues. One last fun fact. Uh, Jones thinks that the Confederate flag is a symbol of white pride and white resistance. How's that working out for you? <laughs> I think we beat those guys pretty bad. Uh, so if you think you're resisting, I got bad news for you. Uh, all those states are in the Union, they're part of the United States of America, and your so called white resistance failed miserably. If you like this video, bless your heart. We got a lot more where that came from. We do a full show every day, Monday through Friday. Come enjoy it ad free by becoming a member, tytnetwork.com slash join.